In this video, I'll teach you how you can combine the contents of multiple cells all in one cell with a chosen delimiter, such as a comma. I'll show you two different ways and some bonus tips towards the end, so make sure to stick around. So as you can see in my current Excel, I have a list of names, but they are all in separate cells underneath each other. I would like to have them all next to each other in the same cell with a comma. Now, there's a couple ways how you could do this. Uh, one thing you might be looking for is to transpose it. So instead of a vertical list, it's having a horizontal list. So you can do that with the transpose uh, formula. I supply my array of values. I close my parentheses, press enter. And as you can see, now it has been put in a horizontal format. So that's what transpose does. It converts a list from vertical to horizontal or the other way around from horizontal to vertical. Now, I suppose that's not really what you're looking for, but I still want to show you in case it is. Now, one thing you want to be aware of is that transpose is an array function. As you can see, I wrote my function here in cell D2 and the outcomes are in multiple cells. So that's quite unique and something to be aware of because if I now would write something here in cell F2 and I write hello, press enter, you can see I get the spill error. And so this frequently happens whenever you're working with an array function because these array functions need multiple cells to put their output in. And so whenever you get a spill error, that just means that you have put something somewhere that breaks such a um, array function. So if I now remove this hello here, you can see I get the contents back. Now, what you're trying to do is to put it all in the very same cell. So one way you can go about this is using the concat function. So with the concat function, I can select multiple pieces of text. I close the parentheses and then it will concat everything together. And as you can see, now it's actually in the same cell. It's not split over multiple cells. Now, one downside that we have with this approach here is of course that everything is really crammed together and preferably we have like a comma between uh, each value. So one way how you can do this is by using the ampersand operator. So it works in actually the same way as you can count function. Uh, so you click on a cell, then you do ampersand and then you click on another cell and let's do it one more time just to illustrate. If I now press enter, you can see I get exactly the same result. So the ampersand works in the same way as the concat function. I would say generally the ampersand operator is easier to use, but the downside is that is that we need to select every single cell, whereas with the concat function, we can simply select the range and then concatenate everything together. Now, what we can do here with this concat function, we can input an ampersand inside of it and then concat every piece of text with a comma and a space. So whenever I want to concat some pieces of text that are not cell references, then we use double quotation marks. So right now we have double quotation marks and then comma space, right? And so after each element, a comma space will be added. So if I now press enter, you can see there we have it. We have comma space, comma space, and then each time the name. Now, one downside here is that all the way at the end here, we have now a comma, and that's not what we're looking uh, to get. Now, how can we get rid of that? Uh, there's multiple approaches. One way to go about this is to use the text before uh, function. So the text before function uh, will give you a piece of text before a delimiter. So in this case, we first supply the piece of text. So that's this over here. And then you have to say, okay, what delimiter do we wish to get rid of? And so that would be the comma space. So I put that in between double quotation marks. And of course, pay very close attention here. Details are important uh, because I've put the comma space in between double quotation marks. That's considered to be text. Whereas the first comma here is simply the delimiter uh, within uh, my function arguments. So now I go to the next argument and that's the instance number. So if I now would just press okay, Notice what happens, we only get back Louis. Why is that? Well, it is taking everything before the first delimiter, which is the comma space, so we only get the first name. In our case, we only want to get rid of the very last one. So to do that, we have to change this function and input an instance number. Now the instance number, we can get this by using the count a function. Now what the count a function does is it counts the number of elements that contains something in their cell. So I simply select my initial list here. I close my parentheses and then I press enter. And as you can see, we have gotten rid of the comma. 
Now, one thing you might be looking to do is to replace the very last comment uh, with an ampersand. That's something that's frequently done. Like the last element of a list, you simply have like an ampersand or an and, right? So uh, how can we do that? Well, for that, we can use the substitute function. So it will replace an existing piece of text with a new piece of text. So first we supply the text in which we want to make the substitution. And then we say, okay, what piece of text do we wish to substitute? Well, once again, that's a comma space, right? So I put in between double quotation marks. And then the new text I'm looking for, well, I put it once again in between double quotation marks. It's space ampersand space and closing the double quotation marks. Now, once again, if I do it like this, um, the first instance will be replaced. In my case, I want to replace the very last one. So I'm going to supply it with an instance number. So I want to replace the very last comma. So once again, I'm going to do a count A of the number of elements that I have. And then I subtract one from that. I close the parentheses, press enter. And as you can see, now the very last comma has been replaced with an ampersand. You could also simply put the word and there. Now there's one way how we could perhaps even simplify this and it's by using a function called text join. Now what text join does is it puts pieces of text together supplying a delimiter. So first we supply it with a delimiter. In our case, that's comma space. Once again, I put it in between double quotation marks. Uh, then ignore empty text. I will put that to true, that's a default value. And then we give it pieces of text. And so I can simply select my array here of names, close my parentheses, press enter. And as you can see, we get exactly the same result as we got here before. And now once again, if you want to replace the last comma, you can simply do that with the substitute function. Now earlier here, uh, when we use this first method here, I was using the text before function. The text before function is quite a recent addition into Excel. So if you're working in an older version of Excel, this might not work. So then we'll have to use a combination of um, left and len function. So let me show you how that works. So we simply uh, write once again, concat, right? So we concat everything together. I select it, ampersand, and then comma space, like we did before, right? But now we want to get rid of this last comma space, right? So one way how you could go about this is to use a left function. And so what the left function does, it takes everything to the left after a certain number of characters. So the number of characters we're looking for, well, we will determine that using the len function. What the len function does is it looks at the piece of text and it determines how many characters are in that piece of text. Now, in my case, I want to look at the already concatenated piece of text. So I'm going to copy and paste whatever was in my first argument to my left function and then put that over there. Now I close the parentheses and if I now press enter, you can see nothing has changed. That's because all we're saying is take this piece of text and take however many pieces of characters this piece of text has. So it doesn't change anything. So what we need to do here is when we calculate the length of this, we are going to subtract two or however many characters um, your delimiter consists out of. In my case, it's a comma and a space, so that's two characters. So I subtract true from the length of my entire string. And if I now press enter, you can see the last two characters have been removed. And as you can see, the last comma also got removed that way. Now, one way how you could potentially clean this up a little bit more is to use the let function. What the let function does, it allows us to give a piece of Excel function a name and then reuse that name instead of having to type over at the same function over and over again. And so in our case here, we're using twice this concat function. So perhaps that could be a little bit easier. So I'm going to write let. And so then the first argument, so that's the name of the variable. In our case, uh, let's call that text. And then that text will be the concatenation. So I copy this here, the concatenation. And then lastly, we have the calculation. So that's everything we already had. But now instead of using this concat here, we can simply replace this with the word text and do the same thing here for the second concat. I also will put in text here. So I would argue that this is actually simpler. Once you learn how to work with this let function, it really allows you to clean up your code. So how does it work? Well, we have this concat function here, right? Where we are taking all of these names and simply putting a comma and a space in between them. The result of that we store in a variable or a constant called text. You can give it whatever name you wish. And now in the last argument here, we can use this 
constant or variable instead of having to rewrite this function over and over again. So this will prevent us making typos and also cleans up our code. So instead of write, writing the concat function here in the, within the left function, we can simply write text. So what it says is here, take the text and then take everything from the left hand side of this text, but get rid of the two last characters. So I think that's a lot more uh, user friendly and I'll press enter and you can see now you have the exact same result. So this is a way how you can still perform this action when you're working on an older version of Excel. Now one downside we're still uh, struggling with perhaps is that these are all still formulas, right? So if you change something here, you can see it also changes uh, in all of our formulas. And sometimes that's the behavior you're looking for, but that's not always the case. So sometimes it can also be very useful to simply have the values and not have a formula. So one way to do this is you select the cell that contains a formula, do a right mouse button click and you click on copy. And then with the same cell selected, you do a right mouse button click once again and then you choose a special spaced option here, which is called values. So we will be pasting whatever we've copied as values. The default behavior here is to paste. And if you're pasting formulas, you will be keeping formulas. But in this case, we want to transform the formulas into values. So I click on values. And first glance, nothing really has changed. But if I now change a name here, and I press enter, notice that these values don't change. Why not? As you can see, when you take a look in the formula bar, they no longer contain a formula, but they contain the actual text. Thanks for subscribing and leaving an optional tip. Consider watching this video next.